Dear friends in Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord, I invite you all to this 28th Sunday of the Ordinary Time. The Gospel today, we have another parable speaking about the rejection of Jesus by his own people. The parable is addressed to the chief priests and elders uh, of people. The parable in itself has got divided into three parts. The first part, uh, it is two times the invitation is uh, given to the people to come and join for the celebration and second, again an open, a general invitation is given to recalling and reminding people to come and join for the celebration and finally, third time, there is, uh, there is a criteria given uh, for the participants uh, to partake in the celebration. The parable is all about uh, the kingdom of God and about the people who will eventually be, will be the part uh, of it. Jesus is citing before the people uh, the marriage celebration uh, of a king for his son. The king sends out his servants referring the long line of prophets uh, sent to the people of Israel to bring back to the love of God and to serve Lord. The king sends another batch of uh, servants to remind those who are invited to come for the banquet. This special invitation uh, refers uh, a kind of a sense of urgency that uh, demands uh, a, a spontaneous or an immediate response. We are told uh, by the story that those who are invited uh, showed no interest. They react differently uh, to the king who invited them. Uh, some uh, involved themselves in their own personal interests, the worldly affairs, and some others uh, behaved very uh, harshly with the messenger sent by uh, the king. In the parable, the king represents God, the son of the king represents Jesus, and uh, the marriage itself uh, signifies the incarnation, the mystery of the incarnation, the union uh, of divine and human nature of Christ. The people who are invited for the wedding uh, represent the Israel. In the passage, we see uh, a universal call and rejection uh, of the Jews. The term good and bad uh, constitutes the mixed membership uh, in the church, both sinners and righteous. The words, uh, the highways, the people uh, from the highways and byways that represents the people, uh, sinners and Gentiles. God's invitation, however, demands a decent dress code uh, for the feast. The people, those who are joining for the feast, must uh, wear the robe of righteousness. Uh, it, is, it is explained by St. Paul in his letter uh, to Philippians chapter 3 verses from 9 to 11. Uh, what is, is uh, St. Paul is explaining what is the Christ's righteousness that a Christian uh, must follow where in his uh, Christian living. Now let us look into the lessons that are given by uh, the passage. The word church derived uh, from the Greek word ecclesia which means those who are invited or those who have been called. Here the first message of the passage is that everyone is invited to the wedding feast that is in the church. All are invited to partake in the church. The, the, the person who invites us uh, demands that we must, the invitation must be given a first concern. 
first priority. The second message of the gospel is that it's not that enough that we are showing up for the banquet, rather we are to be dressed up properly for the banquet. How to dress up for the banquet, St. Paul explains in his letter uh, to Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 14 that as God's chosen one, beloved and holy, you must clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, uh, meekness and patience. Above all, clothe yourself with love which binds everything in perfect harmony. Finally, uh, there is an extended meaning and universal message taught by, uh, by the passage, by the parable, that Christians are invited to enjoy, continue to enjoy the endless uh, joy of the uh, heavenly banquet. The heavenly banquet that is the one for which each one is uh, crying for. The wedding garment refers to true discipleship. Wearing the, uh, the true garment of discipleship means living out the message of the gospel. As Christians, the followers of Christ, we all are called to live out the spirit and the teachings of Jesus. From the very moment of our baptism, we are invited to partake in the heavenly banquet and we are given uh, the proper uh, wedding garment of sanctifying grace and thus we are given all the privileges and blessings uh, of the heavenly banquet. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us, teaches us that uh, the Holy Eucharist is the foretaste of the heavenly banquet. Hence, uh, whenever we approach for the celebration of the Eucharist, make sure that we are in the state of uh, uh, sanctifying grace. Now, uh, let us uh, examine ourselves. Are we having uh, the sincere acceptance to the invitation that uh, God has given to partake in the heavenly uh, banquet? And let us also remember uh, that the banqueting implies the friendship, intimacy, reconciliation and trust uh, to Christ uh, for whose banquet we are invited, the Christ who is loving us at every moment of our lives. May God bless each one of us.